off and it's lighting up the areas. It's just like daylight here at Kennedy Space Center as the Saturn V. How many of you would trust me, a failed civil engineering student, with building bridges? Would you trust me? Would you trust me? Well, there I was, it was 1993. I was in a university in the Midwest, and I was in my advisor's office. I just received the first D ever on a paper. It was a non-engineering paper, and my topic was the excessive use of force in African-American communities by law enforcement. It was almost a year to the day of the officers being acquitted of the Rodney King case. And I looked through this paper, there was no red marks, no grammar errors, no spelling, no notes in the margins telling me what I did right or wrong. I just flipped to the last page and it said D. What's up with that? My advisor could make me understand it, the professor couldn't make me understand it. I had never seen anybody go to college before, so I quit. I lost a full five-year scholarship in engineering. No one in my neighborhood had ever, had ever went to college. None of my friends had ever went to college. No one in my family ever went to college. So I was convinced that post-secondary education was not for me. These are my grandparents, born in 1903, and 1908, respectively. They're children of previously enslaved people. They were hardworking farmers of 40 acres in unincorporated Gibson County, 38382. They lived to be 98 and 99, but only had a third grade education, not because of choice, but why, where they were placed in history. My parents had a choice, though, and both of them chose to drop out of high school. My dad was a hard worker, working 33 years as a welder and 20 years as a bus driver. And my mom was the lunch lady and then later a CNA on 35th and Locust in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They dated in the 1960s. It was dangerous. They used to tell me stories about how they couldn't walk on the same sides of the road or how they couldn't eat in the same areas of a restaurant. And when they went to the movies, my mom got to go straight and my dad had to go up to the balcony. They got married in 1969, only after the 1967 Love in V. Virginia case allowed them to. They raised their blended family in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53206. I'm the baby girl of seven. You know what that means? I'm spoiled rotten. <laughs> I, it made me tough. My brothers used to toss me back and forth over a fence in the front yard. I was like this baby birdie in a human badminton game. And my sisters used to pick my little red fro out and say, we got to get the cookie monsters out your hair. And to this day, I hate cookie monster. <laughs> it also taught me how to not accept the word no. Because if I went to one person, they said no. I had seven more people that I possibly could get a yes out of. And growing up, Milwaukee, 53206, gave me hard skills. Persistence, problem solving, navigation, negotiation are some of the words that popped to my head. But it was the year 1982 that I remember the best. I had this little game I played. I walked a mile to school to 24th and Locust and a mile back. And on my journey to and from school, I would pick up all the bullet casings off the ground and put them in my front pocket of my book bag. And then when I returned home, I let myself into the house. I made my after school snack. I did my homework, and then I would take my book bag and dump all the bullets in this steel bucket that we had in the front foyer. I would sit there on the ground, and I'd separate the bullets, 22, 38, 45, 9 millimeter, 12 gauge shotguns, AK and SK. Those were like bonus points to me. This was a game for an eight-year-old. I would get to the bottom of that bucket, and I would see the dirt and the gunpowder that had settled to the bottom, it almost looked like tea leaves in the bottom of a teacup. There was something there, but eight-year-old Cynthia didn't know what that was. I knew one thing, though. I was not going to let my unborn kids have to go through what I went through. The second thing that happened that year was somebody told me I was smart. I'm smart? 
It was recess, and I was in second grade. In Wisconsin, it gets cold, so I found every excuse not to go outside to recess, so the classroom stayed clean because of me. And after I finished cleaning the classroom, I went up to the teacher's desk and I said, you know, the rest of the kids might need eight crayons. Can I use those 64 crayons in the top shelf of your desk? And she looked at me and she said, Cynthia, you know what? You are so smart. You're not scared to ask for what you need. You know, you think you're slick by staying in, but you don't want to go outside, so you find ways to stay inside. You're smart. What do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, a math teacher. And that whole year, she worked with me intensely, building my esteem, kept calling me smart, kept calling me smart, to the point that this is what I had to do. I had to be on A and B on a roll all the time. I had to have perfect attendance. I had to get them civic awards. I, it became me. So much so, I graduated top of my class in primary school, went to the International Baccalaureate School, high school in Milwaukee, got that five-year scholarship, and then lost it. But that's OK. The nerd came back. <laughs> I got two degrees from Northwestern State University in Louisiana in business with two children. I got my master's degree with three children. Wait, let me back up. With a 3.4 and two children. And then I got the master's degree in business administration with three children, 3.75. And then I went to the University of Central Florida and got a 4.0 with my doctorate. Thank you. And those kids that I promised, my oldest has three degrees from the University of Florida. She's a teacher in Texas. My middle one has two degrees from the University of Central Florida. She's a teacher in Japan. My baby girl is studying to be a history teacher, history high school teacher at the University of South Florida. She's the bravest one out of all of us. So now I've told you about my roots. My roots come 38382-53206. My boots are in 32922, right here in Coco. And I always wondered my whole life why I had to go back and forth across this bridge from I need something, I have hope, I'm getting through it. I need something, I have hope. But you know what? I became the bridge by going back and forth on that bridge. So there I was, March of 2020. Where were you at? I was at a Title I school in Cocoa, Florida, and the pandemic hit. 650 families, and I'm the director of the Community Partnership School. I had to roll up my sleeves, put them boots on, and put that mask on, and we went to work. We created a dream team. We did tens of thousands of meals the first 22 months of that pandemic. We brought hundreds of students to the doctor, to the dentist, to the eye doctor, and 100% of our students had mental health and social emotional support during the pandemic. Let me tell you about a few bridges we built there. The first one, every day after school, I would put boxes of food in my trunk and back seat, and I would ride up and down Clear Lake, Dixon, Fisk. I would say, hey, you OK with food? You straight? You all right? You got food? One of my moms ran up. I just got my food stamps cut. No problem. Let me help bring some of these boxes into your house and get some food in your house. Well, I saw the kids were laying on pallets on the floor. Let's build a bridge, you guys. Immediately made some phone calls. Hello, this is Dr. Dokes. I'm the director of the Community Partnership School. I have some students that are sleeping on the floor, and can you help me? And within a week, that house had all new furniture. The baby girls were off the floor. They had twin beds. They had the rug. They had the wall decor. They had the dresser drawers. It was amazing. But in nonprofit, if you don't take pictures, it didn't happen. So I said, let me take a picture of this. And the baby girl said, I can't smile. It hurts when I smile. Time to build another bridge. Made some phone calls. Hey, can I get in front of your board, your task force, and tell you about the dental needs of children in 32922. And I was able to get in front of boards and get in front of organizations that can help. And we made this collective impact model. We call ourselves the Real Tooth Fairies of Brevard. I know, it's cute, isn't it? <laughs> and that baby girl was the first of 19 to get full dental surgery, no cost to the families. You want to hear about another bridge? 
Got another bridge for you. Second family, single mother of seven, sleeping in her car because they lost everything in a fire. Came to the hub, said, I got you. We went, as I'm holding one baby on this, this hip and the other, holding the other baby's hand, I coached her in going to open a bank account and get in front of these one, two, three landlords and tell her story. story. And I encouraged her that we are gonna find her and her children a place to stay. But it made me reminisce back to the summer of 1999 when I had my two small babies on my hip and in my hand. And I would have to put them on the front porch so I can walk into this abandoned building and make sure no one else was squatting there too. I would bring my children in and I would push the TV console in front of the front door and the refrigerator across the back door and I would pray no one would come in there and mess with us. That mom was in a house in 21 days with us coaching her. Last story, single dad came into my office. He had a look on his face. My heart just sunk, sunk to my stomach. He came in and said, I have a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and a one-week-old, and my wife died last night of COVID. We cried together, allowed him, I held him in my arms, and like the only pain that was more than that moment was when I received a phone call in 2001 about my own mother passing and when I wanted to kill myself in 2018 after being released from jail. But I wouldn't have been there for my kids. I wouldn't have been there for that young man. And I wouldn't have been there for the community. So in that moment, I immediately called for counselors to come and counsel that young man. I immediately called for counselors to counsel the two older babies. And then I started making them phone calls again, building them bridges. Hey, we have this single dad of three girls. It was the holidays, I remember. We took care of them for that Thanksgiving, that Christmas. I started writing grants um, for uh, people who needed help with COVID. And I just received a text mes message a month ago. And he texted me, here's the link to my new business. He said, I want to send you some merch. Are you a size medium? I said, stop it. You know I'm an extra large. <laughs> so those are some of the bridges we, are, we built there. So now there's another amazing program in 32922. Family Promise of Brevard has this amazing collaborative right next to the water tower in Coco. And there we bring awesome people like Brevard Health Alliance, early childhood learning, and career source. And then we have my amazing classroom. We're building more bridges with post-secondary education and workforce development in that room right there. See, sometimes you have to walk the streets in order to find those roses in concrete. And I'm willing to put these shoes to the concrete to go find those people so we can get these jobs filled. So you want to know what's in my bucket today? Hmm. Parent involvement, parent involvement, parent involvement. I hear it all the time. But 40 years ago, my dad was working 12-hour shifts welding. 40 years ago, my mom was working double-doubles and triple-doubles in the nursing home. The same thing is happening today. How can they be involved in their student's life at school when they're trying to pay for this $4 gas, these $7 eggs, and these $2,500 rent? So COVID taught us one thing, though. We don't have to be somewhere in order to be somewhere. So employers, my challenge to you is, allow your parents to do a PI PTO or a PI flex. That's a parent involvement paid time off or a parent involvement flex. And have them go to the break room for 30 minutes and they can get on a video conference and they can talk to the attendance monitors. They can talk to the deans about discipline. They can talk to the teacher about what they can do better in the classroom. They can be involved in the parent teacher association or the SAC committee. If they can get that 30 minutes a week to connect while they're still at work. But parents, if you get this opportunity, I'm gonna need for you to show out and show up. If you're given that 30 minutes to go to the break room, let's get involved with your children's education. And I know a lot of people are saying, you're crazy, Cynthia. Oh my God, the bottom line, this, I've Googled it. There are sillier P PTOs out there. 
birthday PTOs and coffee and cupcake PTOs. Well, let's invest because we keep doing the same thing over and over, nothing's gonna change. So business and parents, I'm here. Maybe that's why I got the business and education degrees. Let's work together and let's figure this out. Secondly, mentors, volunteers, and tutors, we need them more than ever in schools. High frequency, long durations, consistency, and investments for a long period of time. We just don't need the semi-annual selfies with our students and posting them on your social media and saying that I do community service. No, we need you there mentoring our students. And just like Ms. Luffle in second grade, let's start before third grade. When you plant that seed so deep, it grows 40 years later that I remember the moment that I knew that somebody cared about my education. Lastly, who do you have at your table? Making decisions about 53206, 38382, 32922. Are they people who have life experiences like me? Because I was Miss Cynthia way before I was Dr. Dokes, and I've been carrying my bucket since I was eight years old. Get the people, the residents from the community involved in the decision making that's being made for them. So I'm gonna ask you again, how many of you would trust me, a failed civil engineering student with building bridges? Well, we got some work to do. Let's get started. Thank you.